Hey, Seth David here from the world-famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you Bottom Line Math, How to Build a Business Model CFO Style. What we're looking at here on my screen is a very simplified version of what I do as a CFO. But certainly if you're a business owner with no intention of becoming a CFO, or if you're an accountant or bookkeeper looking to you know, provide something very simple for your clients, this is the way to start at this. This is based on a, you know, a coaching type business or training type business uh, where the model is a basic, simple service based model. So we're looking at the number of new clients we're sketching out that we plan to get every single month. The idea here in terms of what I've outlined is that, you know, at the beginning you might be able to start with, you know, there may be three or even more clients that are already kind of ready for this kind of service if you're the one offering it. Um, so I'm assuming you might get like three new clients in your first month. And then after that, we're just being conservative and saying, let's just say you can get one new client every single month. And the second line will just accumulate the number of clients. And as you can see in the description, we're assuming that this is net of attrition. Attrition means that we're assuming that we're going to lose some clients along the way. So the idea again is that conservatively, we're building this model based on the assumption that we get one new client net every month. You might get more. The idea is if you can do this well, if you can get more clients than this, then it's only going to get better from here. Right. Of course, we throw in the assumption based on the revenue per client being two thousand dollars. And from there, it's easy to calculate the total revenue based on the total number of clients times revenue per client. Right. Pretty straightforward stuff. Then we have direct expenses. In this case, again, simple. You can certainly add more line items here if you need to. We're assuming after 10 clients, we're going to pay out 10 percent or 25 percent rather of our revenues in payroll to hire a coach and help them implement our coaching or training uh, business. And of course, this way, it assumes the, you know, that as we need to hire more coaches, that it's built in because we're doing it based on the percentage of our total revenue. And then you just have to figure out at what level you need to hire, you know, each new coach. Then we look at the overhead. So overhead, we have the drivers here based on percent of revenue. And the first thing I want to do is set out our goal based on what we're calling 30% uh, net margin, which is based on percent of revenue. Now, what this means is we take our gross profit here that we derive from our revenue and direct expenses, and we subtract our total overhead to arrive at net income. And the actual net margin that's getting compared with the target is based on the net income divided by the total revenue. That's what net margin actually means. So now we just want to sketch out what do we think our expenses are going to look like month to month. So for advertising, I set up a driver here that's based on 25% of revenue, meaning that we want to take at least 25% of our revenue and reinvest that in the business by running ads, Google, Facebook, whatever you do for advertising on the internet to help drive more clients, right? This way you're not taking money out of your own pocket, but you're taking it right out of the revenues that your business generates. Uh, then we have a few other things here. This is just a start. I'm just sketching it out for you as a start. And just so you can see how this works at the bottom, if I throw in 2500 here and some other expense, you can see that down here it lights up for you and lets you know, hey, we're actually short of our target net margin based on 30%. Right? So it makes it really clear uh, anywhere in the timeline that we've gone below our target. Now you can add all the expenses you want in here and you'll notice internet applications here is linked. If I click on this, it just takes you right to that tab, which you can certainly click on directly. And over here, I've got a list of applications that I think are going to be, you know, at least a start of what you'll need at a minimum in order to run a business like this and roughly what the prices are. You can probably get Google Workspace for less. I have a plan that allows for a pretty much unlimited amount of uploads and bandwidth and all that. So you, you, some of these things you can get away with probably a little little less than what I'm sketching out here. Um, so you can certainly revise this based on your own situation. If you're going to provide a coaching business like this, then it's fair to assume you're going to want something like Slack or Discord to have a community where people can come in and ask questions and so on and so forth. So, you know, I've got that in here based on $3 per month per client. And if you look in the formula, you'll see that it's pulling from the business model to get the number of clients. The number of clients in January is three. And then I've got a hard-coded $3 here based on $3 per client. We can certainly make that a variable by just typing the number three in here. And I can format that as dollars. And then change the formula. Instead of multiplying it by three, I just click on this. So it's multiplying it by whatever is there in cell B9. And then before I copy it over, I need to make sure column B doesn't update. And I do that by putting a dollar sign in there. 
And now I can copy this to the right. So now, if, based on whatever app I choose to use here, I can change the price. Maybe it's only 250 right? And so it's automatically taking the number of clients each particular month times whatever cost I set up here, right? So that's what I love about this kind of thing. It's really flexible. It's really easy to, you know, update for different scenarios, okay? Now, let's say you love this idea and you want to create a schedule of your own. You might be looking at computer equipment and thinking, my God, Seth, that's a lot of money each month on computer equipment. And you'd be absolutely right. I'm not putting these numbers in here as necessarily being realistic, quote unquote, numbers. Um, I'm putting them in here as a starting point for you to work with and then tweak them as you see fit. So here's how you build out a schedule based on what I've already given you to make it really easy. I'll click on Internet Applications. I'll duplicate this tab. Okay. Up here I'll put Computer Equipment. Okay. I'm going to just take that and copy it and double click the tab so I can rename the tab the same. Uh, we, we, we're going to change these descriptions here. Obviously, none of these apply for computer equipment. And I will gut all these out by simply highlighting and hitting delete on my keyboard. And now let's just start simple. Let's say we're going to plan on buying computers whenever we need to hire a new coach in month one. We'll say we need one for you. And then the month that we were going to actually hire our first coach, looking back at the business model, was going to be September of 2022, right? So we'll go in there and assume we need to buy a computer for that business coach. Everything else is going to be zero. And sometimes what I like to do is actually put zeros in there so that it's clear I didn't forget. And now I've got a whole schedule and I can certainly put in all the other line items for any other computer equipment I might think I need to buy on any given month and grab this total and we want to flow it over to the business model. So on the business model tab next to computer equipment, I'll highlight all these numbers and delete them so that there's no confusion. Hit the equal sign. And we're going to point to, we're in the month of January. We're going to point to computer equipment's total for January and hit enter. And then we're going to copy that to the right. And notice what happened. We added in 2,500 just in the month of January. And so for the month of January, we're below our target. And that's okay because this is a one-time occasional or periodic cost. Notice every other month we're good, and even by the time we hire our first coach and buy them a computer, you can see that we're still good in terms of our target net margin. I have clients who manage their businesses based on this very specifically. They look very closely every month at what their net margin is, compare that to where they want to be. And, you know, you can look up industry averages and figure out what's normal for your industry. But honestly, I don't like doing that. I'm much more interested in comparing you to you and looking at you month over month and asking ourselves, first question always is, are we short of our target? And if we're over our target, wonderful, by how much? And what does the trend look like? So here, the trend looks like it keeps increasing. Our net margin gets higher and higher, except for the month we buy the computer in. That drops down, but then it goes back to increasing every single month. So that is the basic premise of what this is all about. It lets you sketch out your business model in black and white so you can see very clearly you know, where you want to be and whether or not you're on track for getting there. And that, my friends, is what CFOs do for clients. That is literally what it is all about. And as I've said, it's literally the bottom line on your business. As always, if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Wherever you're watching this, post your comments below. If you're directly on YouTube, if you're on the website, you can post your comments there. Ask your questions. I look forward to getting them, and I look forward to providing you with the answers.